G'day folks and welcome to Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures on the first of a two-part special. And I've sent the twin Stephen Bushy into Western Australia and in particular the Great Australian Bite on an adventure that only this continent can provide. Now the real adventure begins, Bushy. This is the start of it. Oh, God. <laughs> We've just entered Cape Arid National Park to the east of Esperance. We've already been travelling for about two days in planes and trains and automobiles and everything else to get here. And uh, Bushy, we've got about uh, another 150 kilometres of this. What? <laughs> You're joking. What? What's happening here? Why is this man destructing our car? Well, Ken's letting the air out of the tyres. We're going to let the pressure down to about 28 psi so that we can go through all this soft sand and mud and so on uh, without uh, getting bogged. Uh, there's there's uh, a lot of it, Bushy. There's a lot of it. You'll be all right, mate. Oh, Look, yeah. I promise you that by the end of the day, I'm going to take you to a fishing spot that is going to be one of the prettiest places that, and, the, and the fishiest places that you've ever seen. I was in here in December last year. Fingers crossed there'll be as many fish there now as there was when I was here last, and uh, I think we're going to have an absolute ball. Well, he's been in too many fishy places and caught too many fish, so I'll bear up with the sand. Come on, let's do it. Well, we've got a big enough support team here to restage uh, Desert Storm, I reckon, and uh, they're all doing their job, so we'll jump back in the vehicle and get into it. How far are you going? Oh, all the way. To the cliffs? Oh, yeah. Make sure you go out low tide. Low tide? Yeah. Put a lot, of, a lot of weed on the beach? Uh, yeah, fair bit of weed. Not too bad. Of course, we had to get to the beach first, and that was going to take some doing. Heavy rains a few days earlier had created some rather interesting water hazards along the track. OK, this is the deep bed, boys. Hang on. The fisheries trail through Cape Arid National Park doesn't see a heck of a lot of traffic, so getting stuck on it can be a bit of a drama for a single vehicle, as this local fisherman travelling in front of us discovered. Steve to the rescue! He found a soft bit, eh? Yeah, he did. <laughs> no worries. How you going? Yeah, Dave. G'day, Dave. Steve. We'll get you out of here. No worries, Dave. We'll get you out of here. You take care of that end. You have that end, Dave. You take. Okay. We'll get this pin out of here. Okay. Righto, Dave. Hang on, mate. We're away. Our destination was the bush camp at Israelite Bay and it was a relief to finally arrive and get the tents up before night fell. It had been a heck of a big day and tomorrow promised plenty more of the same.
the surf there. It's going to be all right when we get down there. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a real big swell. We're not all that far from the water here, but we'll go down to the rocks over there. We'll rig up some gear in a minute. Go down and see if we can catch something for lunch, eh? Yeah, a few Tommy Roths or... Yeah, yeah, there should be a few. We might even get a few salmon or a few trevally or something too. And hopefully some of those big snook, so... Oh, yeah. So you reckon just the light gear we don't, won't bring the heavy stuff? Bam. Yeah, we'll pull it out in a minute and dig some lures out. Go and have a go. Sounds good to me. definitely hit the shore first. Uh, fair enough, but I reckon I get one for size, eh? <laughs> Look at that. Look, something's chomped that herring at some stage. Not recently. No, no, it's well and truly healed up, but something's actually bitten him and he's managed to get away. But aren't they a great little fish? That's your, your Tommy Ruff. No one over here in Western Australia is a herring, but they're not really a herring at all. They're the kissing cousin of the Australian salmon. Yeah, the best way to pick them from a salmon is by the, the little black tips on the end of the tail. And also the fact that they're actually rough when you touch them. They feel rough. That's and that... why they call them a Tommy Ruff. This is a short fin sea pike or snook, and he's absolutely nailed that lure. They're pretty good tucker, so I reckon uh, we might hang on to this one. I don't think I'm going to be able to do a very good release on him anyway. Not a bad start for the first couple of casts. Yeah, about three casts. Do we want some herring for a yeah. bit of entree? Hang on to him as well. We'll get a feed together. Yes, that's a little bit better. We're starting to pick up a few. It's just clusters of fish over these little sand patches. We're picking them out, putting the lures across them, and we're starting to have a bit of joy here. What a fantastic location. Bushy's just landed a little silver trevally, which are widely known as skippy here in the west. What I've actually got, I'm pretty sure, is a juvenile salmon. Yep, it's an Australian salmon. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna try and lift this bloke out. I'm just gonna use the waves to edge him up here on the rocks. Not a bad fish. Oh, I tell you what, good fun on this light gear. And I'm not gonna horse him. I'm just gonna use the water. Well, there we go. Beautiful fish. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, and he's only fairly lightly hooked, so I'm going to let this bloke go because we've kept ourselves about two dozen of those beautiful herring or Tommy Ruff. So this is their bigger cousin, the Australian salmon. He's certainly well and truly legal. I've got the little skippy. You got the little skippy? Yeah, they're all very similar colours, aren't they? Yeah. Look. Oh, there goes Goodbye, the skippy. skippy. He's back in the water. Oh, and there goes the... Salmon, he's back in the water too. Oh, he's just skippy. Off you go, mate. <laughs> you just and that's, talk, talk that's to the, the people there, Steve. That's the thing about isn't it? When you've got a school of bait like this and the birds all going on it and things splashing mm. into them, there could be anything underneath them. There could even be a big mullaway sniffing around the edge of these. It's probably going to be sharks. We saw a sea lion before. It's all happening, so you just keep the lure in there and you never know. For you, mate. What have you got here, boys? Oh, a few herring. Good. Great. You reckon you can do something with that, lot? I think we can cook something up for you, lot. Uh, okay. Well, Lovely, don't I? I'll knock the fillet off for you. That'd be great. We'll see what we can do with them. Very good.
day, Bushy. How was that? A bit cold, mate? A bit cold. <laughs> the polar bears were shaking. I tell you what, though, you smell <laughs> a lot better than you did before. Well, that wouldn't have been hard. <laughs> well, look, we've got a big day ahead of us today. You liked Israelite, and it is a great spot, but I'm going to take you to some better spots today. We're going to go to the Bill Bunya sand dunes, which I reckon are going to really blow you away, and then Point Culver and the Baxter Cliffs beyond them. The Point Baxter, Culver, Cliffy, yeah, that'll be really good. Is there lots of fish? There's lots of fish. Let's do it. Travelling east from Israelite Bay to the Baxter Cliffs at Point Culver involves almost 100 kilometres of beach driving, with all the associated dramas of soft sand, deep drifts of seaweed and rising tides. It also took us past the awe-inspiring bulk of the amazing Bill Bunya dunes. These uh, sand dunes are a little bit bigger when you get up close to them, aren't they? I've been watching them for about 20 k's, they're not getting any bigger. Well, those tallest ones are over 100 metres high, so I guess the other ones are in the 80, 90 metre range. I think they're some of the biggest uh, sand dunes in the southern hemisphere, I'm not sure. Well, four-wheel driving in remote country like this is not without its pitfalls, and we've just come across one of them. One of the support vehicles here has stopped with a crunch, and it doesn't look good. We suspect that he's either uh, done something pretty nasty to the rear differential, or possibly even broken an axle. This vehicle is going to be getting towed from here, and that's going to slow us down a heck of a lot. Now the most important thing when you're on a big trip like this and disaster strikes is to keep calm. I'm still pretty calm actually. With the heavily laden chuck wagon in tow, we pushed on again towards Culver, keen to get a quick fishing session in before the sun disappeared behind the cliffs. walk along the beach and actually see the fish in the surf using your polarised sunglasses to cut the glare and throw a lure in front of an individual fish and see it peel off and come across and just inhale it. It's just like the sort of stuff we do up in the tropics on queen fish or threadfin salmon or whatever but we're down here on the Great Australian Bite doing it with Australian salmon. Fantastic fun. Woo. Oh they perform on this light gear too. Woo. Tail walking in the sunset. <laughs> I think he's got a couple of mates with him, Bushy, so keep chucking that lure in. Do the two step. <laughs> Thank you. I can get mine close into where Steve's is hooked up. I might even get another one. Oh, he's a hot fish, this one, Bushy. He's running. Have you had a look at the size of him? Yeah, he's uh, probably two and a half, three kilos. Nice fish. Pound for pound, these things are just fantastic, especially in the boisterous surf like this. The cliffs you can see behind me are the Baxter Cliffs, and they extend all the way along the Great Australian Bight from here, well out into the Nullarbor. But this is where they start, right here at Point Culver. The Baxter Cliffs cut in from behind us where they were wildly scarped, and they become the cliffs along the edge of the shore. And I can't think of a better backdrop for catching these fish. Now, I'm going to use this wave to just surf him up the beach. Oh, he's Look a nice fish. Oh, he's a bit bigger than I thought, Bushy. Get a, I'll get a hold of him. Oh, it's a <laughs> lovely salmon. Yeehaw. He'd be a good, uh, probably three and a half kilos. Have you got your pliers on, no, Bushy? I haven't, I've got mine here. I might give them to you. I'll get him out for you. Yep. I got it. Down there, thanks, yeah. mate. Because I don't want to do him any harm. No, I'll try and get that out. It's not badly hooked. No, they're semi barbless. I partially flattened the barbs. There we go, and they're out. Look at that for a gorgeous fish in this afternoon light. 
just lighting up his flanks. If you grab the rod out from between my legs, Bushy. Oh, that's a good offer. <laughs> I'll take this bloke down, give him a swim, and send him on his way. They're not bad tucker, but they're even better sport fish. <laughs> Next morning we headed up into the mighty Bilbunya dunes for a closer look and a very special treat. When you come across a natural phenomena that's as awesome as these Bilbunya sand dunes, I guess you've got a couple of options. You can sit and quietly contemplate man's insignificance on the landscape, or you can take a piece of polished board, wax up the bottom of it and do this! That's what happens when you dig your feet in. I think I've swallowed half of the Bill Bunya sand dunes. Good idea to wear sunglasses. Oh, the walk back up is the worst part of this sport. I'll catch you later. <laughs>